scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We're going to be considering certain mysteries like the power of your seed in keeping your faith alive, the power of praise, the power of thanksgiving, the power of partnership. The Bible says, if any two shall agree together as touching anything. So it's going to be an interesting series. Let's go straight to the business of the night. Why faith? Why do we need faith in our lives? The Bible clearly tells us how that our walk is a faith walk from Genesis right to Revelation. We see that all those who were able to command results in their generation did so by faith. We are going to Hebrews shortly. But before that, I want us to look at two scriptures. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Why faith? Why do we need to talk on the subject of faith? Can you help us, media? That is possible. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. The B part is my verse of emphasis. And let's walk with King James. It says, Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Read on the B part. One to read. But the just shall live by his faith. So the subject of faith is not just a subject of prosperity or breakthrough. That you're living both in terms of the continuity of your breath and the quality of your life according to scripture. Four times interestingly in the Bible four times the bible emphasizes that the just shall live by his faith we'll just look at two scriptures this is one habakkuk chapter two it says but the just shall live by in fact he didn't just say faith he said his faith his faith so we see that faith is necessary for both living and living victoriously you may want to write that down faith is necessary for both living and living victoriously you cannot live a victorious life in this kingdom outside of the operation of faith hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 there are four but we'll just look at one for the sake of time let's do that quickly please hebrews 10 38 just the a part it says now the just when will the just live by faith when will he live by faith it says now the just shall live by faith then it says but if any man draw back back to what back from this principle of living it says my soul shall have no pleasure in him a very classical rendition of this was given to us in Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read it further when we read verse 6. The Bible tells us, just give us verse 6, but we'll later on start verse 1. Hebrews 11 chapter and verse 6, please help us. I'd like you to read it. It's projected one to read. But without faith, uh-huh. Stop. That's what I want you to see. It was buttressing on Hebrews 10.38 that if any man draws back, my soul will not have pleasure in him. So it says, but without faith, that means outside of faith, 
it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. So we see that the entire life of a believer revolves around faith. Now many of us have had this teaching faith. We've had pastors. Some of us have taught it ourselves. But I think it's very important for us to settle down and really understand what faith is and how it works. We call all kinds of people men of faith. This person is a man of faith. What exactly is faith and how does it work? Seeing that the quality of our lives on earth is dependent on our understanding. Now listen please, not our application of faith alone, but our understanding of the same. You can apply something wrongly, dissipate so much energy, but it does not mean you are producing results. How many of you have seen cars that the exhaust has busted and I mean you hear the car coming so loud like a truck. You think it's a truck running without brake and then you see a little bike or a little car. That's how many people's destinies are. There's a lot of noise and then when you look you find out that there's absolutely nothing. But there are cars that would even come and park you would not even know. That's cars that came intentionally. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Yes, I'm on my way to better days. No matter what I see around me now. I'm on my way to better I'm on my way On my way On my way To better I'm on my way Hallelujah. So why faith? Hebrews chapter 11. It will be a long reading. It's an archive of men and women who demonstrated unto us the reality of faith. Let's read it. Please pay attention. We're studying the word of God tonight. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. It says, For by it, the elders obtain what? A good report. Next verse. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Now watch this. The Bible starts we see certain formations happening. The Bible gives us a character of faith. Then we see certain people mentioned called elders. Are we together? Then we see a formation that faith is able to form realities. And then we see the word of God coming into the picture. Now, I want you to study how these realities begin to piece themselves. Faith, substance, evidence, report or results. Are we together? understanding the word of God. You see these things piecing up together. Then the Bible says so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4 let's see how far we can go. Now the first character in the Bible. The Bible calls them elders. Interestingly the first elder in the Bible is called who? Not Adam. Not Cain. This is, this is a teaching on its own. I'm telling you, I like enjoying myself when I talk about these things. Believe you me, I plan to do the same this night. By faith, Abel did what? Offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice by faith than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. So by faith, 
a man offered unto God a what? More excellent sacrifice. Is it not interesting that the first thing God uses to describe faith is giving? We are going to lions, but the Bible talks of offering a more excellent sacrifice. It takes faith to be a giver. Cain gave, but he was a miser. And God said the reason why he mised was he did not have faith. Are we together? It was out of faith that Abel took sacrifice as though that was all he had and gave unto God. Meaning greed. Listen. Selfishness of all sorts is traceable to what? Lack of faith. That at any point in a man's life, he is a withholder and not a giver. I don't mean money. A giver of anything. It is because of fear of the continuity of the supply. And the Bible says it's lack of faith. Number two, five. By faith, the second elder we see in the Bible is who? Now, Enoch was the seventh man from creation, theologically speaking. Enoch was the seventh man from creation. And then from Abel, he just jumps to Enoch and says, by faith, Enoch was what? Translated. 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 Kabarato satire. By faith, a man can leave a level to another. By faith. I know this is talking of translation out of this realm, but you need to understand what this meant. Enoch translated from one territory to another by faith. Like a man can leave poverty to wealth. Like a man can leave sickness. It says if you want to experience translation, it will happen how? By faith. That he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had a testimony. Notice how pleasing God is tied to faith. It seems like God's obsession is not just praise and worship. God's obsession is that he can find men who have faith in him. Every time you see the manifestation of faith, you see God smiling. The Bible gives you a picture that he's happy. He's well pleased. Number three. And without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe. That he is. The word is there means he exists. He exists. And then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hear what the Bible says. For everyone that seeketh findeth. It's important we get this foundation. Seven. Let's see how far we'll go. By faith. Noah comes in now. Noah. Kalabakotaya. Be warned of God of things not seen as yet. When God was warning Noah, there was no evidence that those things were coming. The same way God is saying you will prosper and there is no evidence. But Noah moved in advance. He didn't wait to say, let me see a cloud first. He started building the ark when the sun was shining bright and Bible calls it faith. Now, I hope you... Those who did mathematics, everybody did mathematics. Whether you like it or not. I'm not asking you whether you passed. I'm saying you did it. Are we together? Now listen. A good teacher does not give two examples and set exams. No. When they give you, especially a difficult aspect of mathematics, they give you as many examples. And those examples have variations of the way the underlying principles are applied. Is that true? Uh -huh. It's supposed to help you familiarize you with the different ways. This is what the Bible is doing. We're working maths here. Are we together? So the Bible begins to give you different people. Do you know everything the Bible is saying about them is the same? He's only using different human examples to show you different applications. How men maneuvered circumstances by faith. So by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. The word fear there is reverence. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. 100 years 
it took Noah to build an ark. How many years have you waited for your miracle? Let me hear it, please. Six months. And you're already saying, Lord, if by November, a man moved by faith for 100 years, how long do you have to live on earth to spend 100 years building an ark? I'm sure the children, when they gave birth to their children, they said, we, we grew up seeing our grandfather. What exactly is this project? And Noah said, the rain will come. And the children said, well, I'm now a teenager. I, I believe the rain will come. And God kept watching and says it was by faith. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to break down faith for you to really understand. And then you will know that many people really do not believe in God. Many of you at the end of this teaching, you will tell God, I'm sorry. Because you will find out that you really should not receive a result. Amen. Next verse. By faith. Now Abraham comes in. I like the Bible. How many people now? Abel, help me. Enoch, uh huh. Noah, Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go into a place, that means your destiny must be fulfilled by faith. God called a man. Are you seeing now? So we see by faith to do different things. Translation. Now we are seeing he's talking about destiny here. An inheritance. By faith. You are not the first person to graduate and wonder what to do with your life. There was a man in the awe of the Chaldeans. Awe of the Chaldeans called Abraham. And the Bible says when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive an inheritance obeyed he says and he went out help me please that's the faith part of it not knowing whither he went go to lagos yes lord what are you doing in lagos obeying god you are stupid god what do you say you are a man of faith abraham don't turn there genesis 22 Genesis 12. Come out of your father's house and out of your kindred and out of all of these. Listen, to a land that I will show you. No name. The assignment is follow me. And the Bible says Abraham gathered his house and says, Gentlemen, we are off. Let's go. May you surround people in your life who can let you obey God. Yeah. There are times, let me just say this in advance. There are times certain people will love you too much to allow you obey God especially for we young people because our parents many of them even those who were not born again walked by faith are we together the last time their father saw them was from one they used to call it from one the next time the person came he came with the lady he would marry a master's holder how he survived the father did not know one heavy box and a blessing. Don't drink, don't follow women, be hard working. The God that kept me keep you. Enter a boat and go. And the father had confidence that the boy would not die. After eight years, he now came back and said, Daddy, God is faithful. I now have a house, a car. How did it happen? By faith. But now, you see someone of 30, they say, I think you should start settling. I say, mommy, I will take it gently. Just buy me blanket, buy me sugar, buy me tea. Don't laugh. We have been so pampered that the system of faith is eroding our minds. So whenever we say faith, many people just laugh. That's the reason why there are very few people who really do much i'm not even talking ministry in the kingdom in our lives this over pampering are we together now auxiliary faith okay uncle i'll take the first step but make sure you are standing by look at what he told peter he said fear not jesus speaking it is i and peter said if it be thou bid me come jesus said come faith faith Let's read to verse 10. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him, with him of the same promise. Uh -huh. 
For he looked for a city whose builder and maker is who? The Lord. Next verse. Through faith, the first woman now, also an elder. The first woman, through faith, Sarah herself received what? So how do men receive strength in the kingdom? You don't receive strength in the kingdom just by eating a good meal. Although that is important. She received strength and conceived seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful. Now notice that among all these people. The common denominator is that they did or said something. Are we together? There was nobody whose testimony was just passive. The Bible tells us something they did. Something they said. Something they did. Something they said. Let me say this up front. Faith is not hearing what God has said. Faith is fulfilling your own path. Your own path. Let's go to verse 17. I want to jump. Verse 17. Are we together? By faith, Abraham now, when he was tested, did what? Or tried. Offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Sacrifice by faith. Sacrifice by faith. Now the Bible talks of Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. Let's go to 23 and look at Moses. The Bible dwells for, I don't know why, but it seems to me like Moses was the person the Bible dwelt so much in. All of the people who the Bible talked about faith, even Abraham, who we call to be the father of faith, the Bible just spoke about him. But for Moses, the Bible seemed to dwell and talk a lot about Moses, which I found interesting. Let's read on. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was did what? Was he three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's command? You understand the act of faith. They put him in a basket and pushed him to the Nile, trusting God to take care of him. Next verse. Then by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called what? Refused to be called by faith. Just like you refuse to be called um, any name that seems derogatory, any name that comes from a background that can destroy you. Oh, you are all the poor ones. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said by faith, seeing something, he refused. Choosing rather, think about this, to suffer affliction. Listen, there are certain kinds of afflictions that the Bible says you must go through them by faith. It's a choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When a lady refuses to say yes to an unbeliever, and instead of marrying two years before that time, now remains single because she refused to say yes to an unbeliever by faith, waiting for a godly man she believes to be her husband. The Bible calls it to suffer affliction. Not every act of faith looks pleasant in the process. In fact, let me tell you something. A major part of the journey of faith will make you look stupid because you are forfeiting, we call it in economics, opportunity cost. You forgo something for the excellency of what is waiting for you. 
than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what? A season. 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. And so on and so forth. And um, Let me look for somewhere now. I mean the Bible talks about him right. Well let's read. Let's read really. Let's read down to um, 30. Where it goes to Joshua now. We're reading down to 30. You see how much a lot was talked about Moses. By faith he forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. 28. We are reading down to 30. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Lest he that destroyed the destroyer now. The firstborn should touch them. 29. This is the last of the talk about Moses. By faith they passed through the Red Sea. As by dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do. The Egyptians tried it but they didn't do it by faith. So they died. Are you seeing now? Now let's talk of the wall of Jericho. Verse 30. By faith the walls of Jericho did what? Not by strength. By faith. We saw them going around. Walking around Jericho. Are you understanding the character of faith already? Every one of these people did something. Whoever tells you faith happens without your commitment lied to you. I'm showing you all through. The common denominator to all these things is that they believed God and there was a demand on their own part to respond by saying, by doing, by keeping their own part. So their obedience upgraded the promises of God to a covenant. The walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Read 31. By faith, ah, yeah, yeah, the second woman. Look at the name the Bible calls her. Now this is interesting. Why didn't he just say by faith, Rahab? I think we are smart enough to know. Then he says, by faith, Kalabakata, a woman who was a harlot changed her story. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not, meaning she was part of them. She was destined to perish. Please, is that true? What is the wages of sin? Help me. What is the wages of sin? That means there is a system in God where men can change prophecy. There is a system in God where men can alter obvious consequences. The key is faith. If first tells you her credentials, she was a harlot. Do you know what it means to earn a right to stay on a wall so that whoever is passing sees you before even seeing the king? By faith, she changed her report. Everyone died in Jericho except Rahab. Not only did she not die, she forced herself into the genealogy of Jesus. When she had received the spies with peace. And what more can I say? I really wonder. What more do you need to hear? You, you see, I'm understanding what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, if by now you don't see the synergy, what more can I say? He says, for time would do what? To fail me, to talk of others. There were other elders in the Bible. Let's name them. Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. There were many. Next verse. Who did what? Through faith. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Uh -huh. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouths of lions. Next verse. Quenched the violence of fire. Look at that. I wonder why Nigerian actors have never acted a film this powerful. Men who did this by faith. Produce a film and call it by faith. 
exploits in the spirit. They escaped the edge of the sword. Men who looked at death eyeball to eyeball and said, you will not kill me. And then the Bible now says, out of weakness were made what? Men who were born weak but refused that they will not die weak. Works valiant in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Then listen to this. Women receive their dead raised back to life. And then the Bible quickly puts a very strange balance. It says, and others were tortured, not accepting. That means they did not die out of the power of death conquering them. The Bible says they rejected deliverance willingly. They discovered in their knowledge of God that to die is gain. And they said, I can live, but let me prove to God how much I trust him. And they said, it is within my power to command deliverance, but I reject it. Faith. It didn't say they died out of weakness. Please don't confuse this. They died. They had. Do you know there are many people today who died? When we get to heaven, they will tell you they were offered an opportunity to live, but they saw something higher and they said, Let's go. The Bible calls it faith. Now you mourn them and try to look for hilarious stories, but they have, they have joined those elders. It's a list, it's a roll call. There are many people shortlisting themselves there. It says not accepting deliverance. That they may do what? Obtain a better resurrection. I'm going somewhere with all this. And you will soon see. Next verse. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. You are not the first to be laughed at. Are we together? Yea, moreover, of bonds and of imprisonment, imprisonment. They were stoned and they were sown asunder. Now you don't like this. Koinonia is quiet. But the Bible tells you beforehand that these men had the power. They were not helpless. Bible history makes it look like they were helpless. The Bible says they, they had the power to command deliverance. But they saw something higher. And by faith they stood. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world, there are such men that the world was not worthy of. They walked upon the earth. Have you been given something that you say is a privilege? There are men who they are walking upon the earth is a blessing to the earth. The Bible says it's a privilege. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. 39. I want you to read 39 and the next verse, I believe, verse 40. Am I, am I right? Yes, 39 and 40. Read it with all your heart and your spirit. Ready? One to read. And these all, uh huh. Having obtained a good report through faith, receive not what? Now read on. Next verse. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us. There is a dimension of the manifestation of faith that God is trusting our generation to reveal. And the Bible calls it the perfection of of all these elders as great as their exploits are and were the bible says that god had provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect now theologically speaking there's been two schools of thoughts just explaining this scripture a lot of people mean this to be the dispensation of grace because you would notice that all the people who were communicated were largely old testament people are we together now and so the better promises that many people think uh they say that it is because these people suffered in the dispensation of the lord the old testament and now we have access to grace the substitutionary work of christ now that is true but i don't believe that is all are we together 
that is true but the death of christ in itself afforded us a higher platform to manifest faith are we together mm. an example of such opportunities is the possibility to live by the faith of the son of god now this was a possibility they did not experience but that a man can tap into a higher frequency of faith called the faith of the son of god not just your faith the faith of the son of god you can bring god's faith to an operation and get results this is a better promise but that's not what we are talking about i'm showing you men who did strange things through faith and so if you and i must make impact in our generation it will have to be how by faith through faith by faith through faith so how are you going to build that house how are you going to change the story of your family by faith how are you going to get out of that sickness and infirmity please understand what i'm saying there is the chronicles of ordinary men who dare to believe god and changed a lot of things so faith is, is, is important to please God and we have a testament of men and women who walked by faith the next thing I want us to look at is the word of God Let's look at the word of God. Being that this is the instrument that produces faith, it is important for us to look at the character, and I'll be very brief, the character of the word of God. Write this down, please. The word of God whether spoken or written the word of god whether spoken or written contains the life of god the word of god whether whether spoken or written contains the life of god the word of God, whether written or spoken, contains the life of God. Number two, write it. The word of God is a representation of his commitment to man. The word of God is a representation. I want you to write this. We are looking at the character. A representation of his commitment to man. Like you have a covenant, like you have a contract between two people so the testament of his commitment to man number three the word of god represents his will for man now this is important we're going to dwell a little here the word of god represents his will comes from the greek word logos where we get the word word logos the thoughts of a man the will of a man the intention of a man so the word of god represents his intention his will his will it's a legal term his will for man number four the word of god is the basis the basis for contact with man the word of God is the basis for contact with man. I'm giving you certain characters of the word of God as far as the manifestation of faith is concerned. The word of God is the basis for contact with man. That means that the Holy Spirit remains helpless until the word of God creates the platform for contact with man. Number five, the word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. The word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. 
God is moved with the feelings of our infirmities but not to action. The word of God is the only instrument capable of moving God to action. Write this down. The word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. The word of God contains instructions, prophecies, promises. Also contains principles. Are we getting blessed? Now please look up everyone. Please look up. Now there's been a lot of argument in the body of Christ as to whether this should be called the word of God. The word Bible comes from the word Biblios and that just means a book. Nothing special really. It just means a book. Are we together? Now theologically speaking for many years in the church age they did not have a compendium of 66 books like this. There are other schools of thought that argue how that there are many chapters and verses that are missing in the Bible. There are many chapters and verses that were added that should not have been in the Bible. Are we together now? And how that there are other books of the Bible. Like there are arguments about the apocryphal books, the apocrypha, the Roman Catholics use that a lot. And then there are other books, the books of Jasha. There are other books called the Annals of the Kings. There is the book of Enoch. Are we together now? Now all these books together have been argued by theologians. Some of them believe that it should be contained since the character of scripture is that all scripture was inspired of God. Are we together? And that anything that is of God should give spirit and life. So I'm, I'm just giving you an educational background on this so that you will understand. So there has been a lot of argument. In fact, currently, um, I know that there was a time certain, uh, I think a Rab Rabonical Association also came up with certain things and they felt that a lot should be edited in scripture. Now the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Say Hebrew. And the uh, the New Testament was written largely in Greek and Aramaic. Are we together? Now, these people wrote these scriptures, but they were not in charge of its translation. There's no point to give you the whole story of Bible history, how that this translation were in bits and pieces. Some of these pages were missing for many years, and then they were found together with what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. And then it was at the time of King James, King James. He was a real king, ancient king called King James. Not ancient like modern history now, King James, who authorized the publication of a compendium of these 66 books that we call the Bible. Are, are we together now? So all the 66 books, Old and New Testament together are called. Now, I'm not, the point of all of this is not to create a debate about other extra biblical texts or some exaggerations that were done here that's not the idea one thing we know for sure is this listen every man who contributed in the writing of this was imperfect as a person that means if god allowed them to still rob their imperfection it means the mystery is not in the letters are you getting what i'm saying now please you must understand what i'm teaching you we're examining faith Elijah was a temperous man. The Bible is a compendium of many things. Demons spoke in this Bible. Is that true? Donkeys spoke in this Bible. Are we together? Men spoke in this Bible. People lied in this Bible. People used divination in this Bible. So the fact that it is written here does not automatically mean it is of God. You have to get this. So when the Bible or when we talk about the word of God, we are not talking about just the opening of anything because you see we must balance this there are believers who say if you can show me in the bible i will do it that means you are going to get into error the, the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want there are habalists today when you enter their shrine you see other books and you see a very clean bible there are we together and they will read the scripture and instruct you based on that scripture and because it is in the bible you will believe i should walk no so i want us to examine what the word of god is 
listen to my message uh, I think the living logos I done a teaching years ago on that what exactly is the Word of God because none of the apostles in the early church in fact even up till um, Emperor Emperor Nero Constantine and all of these people they never had the opportunity to hold the Bible like this it was a taboo they were kept in temples are we together and then of course when the people of God were caught in different kinds of captivities they were hidden and taken from place to place to arrive like this as a compendium a lot happened to them are we together but the Bible says let the word of Christ Colossians 3 verse 16 dwell in you richly so I want to ask you a question how did the disciples grow in the word when Jesus resurrected I want you to go back to the book of Acts when an average believer got up in the morning what did he study and how did he study are we together you would only go to the temple we do it in the Anglican for those of us who are inclined Anglican and maybe Presbyterians to do this they have what we call first reading and second reading is that true where you come up you read this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God and then you know that continues and then there are parts uh, where you recite you know the the Apostles Creed and so on and so forth like that now other Pentecostal circles do not have the privilege of having that kind of thing you just come you preach and then you end this was how it was in Jewish temples the priest one of the all of those people would come up and give you one of the scrolls they had messages for every time so you would read it and roll it back and and keep it and then they could preach from it they could speak for it and and so on and so forth now if you don't understand this that i'm teaching three things will happen to you number one you can fall into the error of absorbing the letters blindly and believing that you are growing in the world because you are consuming these letters that's the first error or number two you can just say since this is not the word of god let me throw it away and destroy your spiritual life there are people today now you know i was talking with a few people and they were talking to me and said look the use of ipads and, and now please i don't have if you are using devices here that's the the, the goal is not to to um um discredit you on all of that we're in the 21st century but i think a, a group of gentlemen were talking to me and they said apostle what is your take on the use of ipad as far as the revelation of the word of god we have is concerned because because our concept of scripture is that i'm holding a book a man of god even said in revelations god told john write not type <laughs> amen praise the Lord now see personally I honestly I honestly believe see there's something about holding this thing there is a chemistry between the letters of this book and your eyes I, I absolutely believe that but I don't have a problem I mean I have all kinds of things we use it on our devices phones laptops and and whatever you have what is the Word of God write this down let's define what the word of God is since this is the instrument for producing faith write this down the word of God is any communication the word of God is any communication or any platform any communication or any platform where the voice of God the ways of God write it down where the voice of God the ways of God and the life of God can be accessed the Word of God is any communication or any platform where the voice of God please listen the ways of God and what the life of God can be 
that means what I am speaking to you now if it contains the voice of God if it contains listen the ways that is the principles of God and if it is capable of releasing the life of God what is this called the Word of God meaning as I'm speaking to you now what I am saying is worthy of being written here the only thing is that I was not part of those who were specifically you know brought together to make the 66 books God's idea is not for us to be limited by 66 books God's idea is that our lives become a continuation of the books that are written here are, are we together so God's ultimate goal is not for you to be sound in scripture but that you become it an expression that's why the Bible says we are living epistles say living epistles so that look at how it is if you read something like verily verily I say unto you the words that I speak listen they are spirit and they are life are we together God's idea is not just for me to read it but become that scripture so that whoever does not have an opportunity and left his Bible at home can also read it in me are you getting the point so imagine every believer like a page in the scripture releasing certain possibilities men were not supposed to know God just by reading the Bible they were supposed to know God by interacting with the church so that way before anybody opens this book you should open the book and say oh so this is an explanation so this attitude is called kindness are you getting what I'm saying Ah, uh, some of you are lost let's come again I want to deliver you from religion listen 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 the power is not just in cramming scriptures the power is in the words that are written here that the Holy Spirit can use this word to forge something upon your spirit so that you become an expression of it not just a talker of it and that's where we destroy ourselves the word of God is not Greek the word of God is not Hebrew listen the word of God is not English the word of God is any platform for accessing him listen if there is a way I can make this become the voice of God and a platform to speak a particular scripture within the period of that miracle this is the word of God How do I teach this now? Help me, Holy Spirit. If I prophesy to you and I say, Hey, Jimmy, may the Lord bless you, and it happens, do you know what why it happened? Because what I have spoken is the word of God. It was a platform where the life of God could flow to him. If I use oil to lay on your head, the oil works because the word of God is on it so the word of god is not the right things about god the right things about god how many of you know granite now this bible is like the granite the real granite do you just eat the thing like that you open it but you cannot access what is inside until you come to it are you getting what i'm saying see brothers and sisters that is why many people read this but they cannot get faith I'm going to show you something how faith comes but we must understand the character and the Word of God I read a lot I study the Bible but I have the consciousness that I am an expression of the Word of God are we together now so when you come to me I don't run and open the Bible and say this verse is this verse that uh -uh. that I left my Bible at home does not mean the Word of God is at home the Word of God is living and active it's your Bible I'm, I'm teaching you your Bible see I'm showing you why we don't get results I can hold this 
against a witch and put it under my bed and snore myself into a terrible dream are we together i may think that because this was under my pillow it does not have any power in itself the power is released listen when this is studied by faith by faith means that you believe that although these are letters the spirit of god can breathe upon this this is what logos you see the word logos and rema that people are speaking rema is not just the revealed word rema is when the breath of the spirit comes upon this letter it's like the breaking of the ground not seed and all of a sudden you can receive it so you don't need to recite the scripture you only need to have the life thereof the recitation of the scripture is to add to your excellence in communication and to strengthen your conviction it is not the recitation in my name they shall cast out devils Jesus did not say if you stand before people the name he said is not Jesus we mentioned Jesus so that they will know that the office we are acting upon is the Christ the name is not Jesus the name is Lord and Lord is a revelation it means absolute master sovereign controller so I look at a spirit I'm not speaking but I'm casting him in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus is not a recitation in the name of J-E-S-U-S -S, be healed no the name of Jesus is an office so whether I am talking or not is still the name of Jesus are you getting what I'm saying now Jesus meets somebody, a madman in Gadara. The demons beg him and beg him and say, don't cast out. What did he say? Go. Now, that word go, you say it and it may not work. Because the go is not just G-O. The go was simply an, a voice activated communicator of the word of God. Whatever he said, even if he said come, they still would have gone. It's not, it's not like they needed intelligent English because they, they spoke good English. The demons say we understand. No. Please don't be excited for nothing. I really want you to get this thing. Are we together? The word of God is not just about your voice. The word of God is about an understanding that makes you become a platform for his life. So as I am walking now, I'm giving the word of God expression. If I happen to open my mouth and speak to you, I have given the word of God more expression. That is the reason why a donkey could still communicate the word of God. That is why handkerchiefs and aprons, they were taken. Could the handkerchief speak? They could not speak, but they were going by the word of God. Jesus sent men in his name. They were not born again, yet they returned with results. They said the demons were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Why do we study the Bible? Write this quickly. We study the Bible for three major reasons. Number one, we study the Bible because contained in the word of God, contained in the Bible as we know. Now I can call it interchangeably the word of God, you understand. The Bible contains the most accurate dealing of God with man. The Bible contains the most accurate dealing of God with man. We study it because it's the most accurate historical compendium of God's dealing with man. There are many history books, but the Bible gives us the most accurate compendium historically speaking of God's dealings with man number two the Bible contains principles promises prophecies from God to man the Bible contains principles promises prophecies from God to man so we study so that we can have an understanding of these things
Number three. We study the Bible because it is the only book. We study the Bible because it is the only book that can authorize the Holy Spirit to make manifest what is written therein. We study the Bible because it is the only book that can authorize the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit to make manifest the things that are written therein. No other spirit is legally authorized to manifest everything written here. Now, it does not mean other spirits cannot manifest what is written here. But only the Holy Ghost is authorized to back up, to make manifest. Meaning, listen, listen. Meaning, if I read the Bible and I see by his stripes I am healed. Now, listen. When the word of God contained is released in my spirit. Because of this book is giving me access to that word of God. Now, the Holy Spirit is authorized. To make real that which I have believed from the book. Are you getting what I'm saying now? A time is going to come. Maybe not in this current church age. But a time is going to come. We are not going to read this again. I hope you know. <laughs> yeah. A time will come we will not read this. But we will continue growing in the word. A time is going to come we will not read this again it's not heresy it will not be in this dispensation the book of Revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation we do not yet know what will happen therein the same way before our time it was only from Acts chapter 1 you know when the church was born and now our dispensation has had the privilege of access to read this are we together other saints believers still in our dispensation did not read this yet the word of god was mighty in them for instance apollos the bible says he was even mighty in scripture this is where we miss it we read the letters and ben Hadad, the king of syria gathered all the hosts together gather me oh god gather me gather me oh god you see now listen listen that looks very sincere but the word of god is not on that statement i'm being careful so you don't feel offended but it's the truth i want to teach you how faith works do you know for many years i really didn't understand how faith worked until one time I, I took out, I studied almost 11 people. Those who represented men of faith. From Bishop Oyedeko to Kenneth Copeland and his wife. To Dr. Frederick Casey Price. To all of the men, hallmarks of faith. E.W. Kenyon. I sat down with these people and I started seeing it. I said, so this is where we are missing it. We recite scriptures and believe that the recitation is where the power is released no sir are we together am i discrediting the reading of the word of god of course not of course not you can see how old this bible is it was not like that something made it so it's called diligence diligence until the bible you you see it i don't know how many times i've laminated this bible again and again I've read it to a point that the pages, I can close my eyes. You say, Matthew, okay, I'm in Isaiah. <laughs> I wanted to try, you know, I can literally open any page. Everywhere is marked up and down. So I believe it. But I found out that many of us keep accumulating this. And then we wonder why things are not working for us. The word of God is the spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. Whether released by the reading of these letters or communicated through the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes. Now let's discuss faith. We're back to faith. Romans 10, 19. Romans 10, 17. Is God helping us tonight? I'm working this thing with us because I want us to understand faith. We are going to pray. 
Romans 10 19. Read it, please. 10 17. One to read. Uh huh. Now, the word hearing, let me correct two things. The word hearing, the first hearing, is a very broad word. It does not just mean faith comes by using your ears. Are we together? The word hearing is a very broad word. And there are many synonyms you can add to it. Number one is perception. 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 Faith comes by perceiving. Not just hearing with the ear alone like speaking to you physically. Faith comes by perception because when you read your Bible, you don't hear anything. Correct? You don't hear what you read like this. You can hear through your ears. And remember, even about hearing, the Bible says, he that has an ear. Meaning not everybody has this kind of ear. Are we together? So, the first hearing there means perception. Any platform that can create perception. It's not just limited to hearing. And then the second hearing there means understanding or comprehension. I want you to correct that. Not necessarily in your Bible. I'm not saying it's wrong. So faith comes by perceiving and understanding and that by the word of God. That's how faith comes. When you just read it and it says hearing and hearing, there is a dimension of application. It means listening again and again and that can help. But the accurate picture is perception and understanding. Everybody say perception. Say understanding. The second hearing there is understanding understandest what thou readest on that was where the problem was the utopian enoch he was not reading he was reading but understandest what thou readest perception so when i'm studying the word of god the bible now and i'm reading it the moment perception can come out of it the word of god has come into my spirit i don't have to hear now when I'm listening to Bible on tape or hearing a preacher teach like this and the word of God comes, it is still hearing. So when we say hearing, I don't just mean your ears. Your ears, your eyes, your dreams, your visions, any platform that can create perception can impart faith. Mm. Listen, listen. There are people who have had dreams and got up from those dreams. Are we together and took certain actions those dreams brought solid conviction to their lives i shared with you about the encounter that i had with jesus christ now that encounter is not written in the bible that joshua Seman will have an encounter but in that encounter i told you jesus did not speak to me he never opened his mouth to speak yet he spoke so many things i left that encounter full of faith and stephen full of faith where did he read anything that we see faith there Do not limit your Bible study to just hearing and reading. Any platform that creates the perception of the word can release faith. So the first is perception. The most common platform of perception is hearing your ears. Because you hear sounds. Sounds. So as I'm speaking to you now, if you cover your ears, it's difficult for you to read my lips. Do you know why I'm speaking this to you? How do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith how do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith if someone is blind if someone is deaf if someone is dumb are you saying faith cannot come to him are we together you see people go to crusade grounds completely deaf Meaning as a man of God is preaching, other people are jumping. They themselves are not even following. Yet at the end, they are healed. And we are going to be finding out later that their faith healed them. So how did it come? Question two. A dead man who cannot breathe, cannot talk, cannot do anything. How does he come back to life? What is the principle of resurrection? And then, how did the bones of Elijah, not breathing, still transfer the anointing to somebody? Everybody say the word of God. 
that thing you call the bones of Elijah was the word of God any platform that can release the life of God thank you Jesus say after me the word of God is not limited to my hearing thank you the word of God is not limited to my hearing alone the word of God can come into my spirit through any mechanism that can create perception and understanding are you getting what I'm saying meaning the word of God can come to you through a Christian music now you are listening to a song play something play what you are playing watch this listen if this guy is anointed hallelujah okay that's all right that's all right thank you look at what this guy is playing play it are you hearing any words english is there hebrew is there your language i want to follow me carefully are we together now but you see the anointing that is released from this i can put the word of god on this sound now and you will see miracles happening are you getting it now <laughs> i can put it by saying then this now the sound that leaves this keyboard does not become an ordinary sound it becomes the word of god why a platform that can release the life of god the power of god are you getting what i'm saying now you will hear it and somebody now will come under the anointing and you are wondering the operation of the word of god this is ordinary keyboard that's how you can be listening to worship in your room and faith is rising you are not exactly reading any scripture per se yet faith is rising because through it the word of god is coming are you getting what i'm saying the word of god the word of god is at work in me the presence of the holy spirit in my life is a sign that i was born of the word if you are not born of the word he cannot come because he comes in response to the word so i am born of the word of god new life is in me so the holy spirit is comfortable to live in me are we together and every time that spirit and life is in me he can release what is being said now i can speak it to happen but i don't have to speak it alone to happen i just need to create a platform for it to happen look let me tell you brothers and sisters if you believe this you will know why we pray for the sick not necessarily having to say be healed you just touch them and they're saying sir you see some somebody who tried to say here this is where the pain is and you are touching his head how does touching the head heal pain at the back is the word of god you are only placing the word of god on them so you have become an expression of the word the word became flesh that's what you have now become so you are not only reading scripture you are the word becoming flesh the word becoming flesh when you play keyboard you transfer the word of god to it this is what is called the ministration of life the ministration of life you are transferring life you are transferring life to that word are, are we together now so when you put the word of god upon this now deliverance begins to happen healings begin to happen a sinner can sit down that's why people come for concerts and at the end of it you make an altar call and they come out you didn't teach john 3 16 but the word of god convicted them because it came from the music i want you to understand faith i really want you to understand faith this may look complicated but as we continue you will see how it ties up it will make your life powerful i don't move around hoping that demons will respond to my quoting of scripture i know a lot of scripture to the glory of god but i am a life-giving spirit 
I am a life-giving spirit. My body has become a communicator of the word of God, the spirit and the life of God. So if I shake you, for instance, shake me, Femi. If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. Are you seeing that? If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. You may be sick, I may not know. But as soon as I leave you, you find out I've been healed. Now, I did not ask you whether you are sick. The word of God saw a need. And because I have become the word of God, it feels it immediately. Are we together? Say I'm a manifestation of the word of God. Please, I want you to say it. I am a manifestation of the word of God. Say this, my goal for studying scripture, my goal for studying scripture is not just to be learned, but to be an expression of the word of God. My goal for studying scripture is not just to have head knowledge. It's not just to be learned, but to be a walking Bible. So when men look at your life, they can read a scripture immediately through your life. Living epistles. We fool ourselves in the body of Christ that because we have finished the Bible cover to cover, and by God's grace I've done this many times, so we say i've read the bible cover to cover if i'm a man of god as i'm speaking the bible says blah, blah, blah. And, and once they are talking these spirits are saying my god these guys don't even know what the word of god is we fool ourselves and at the end of it nothing happens are we together and then somebody comes with a saxophone or a guitar and starts playing Anywhere you see the manifestation of the power of God, the word of God must have preceded it. Because the Holy Spirit is not authorized to manifest when the word of God has not gone ahead. So when you see the word of God moving, when you see the Holy Spirit moving, he's confirming the word. Confirming the word. Whether spoken or revealed. The manifestation of the word of God. The manifestation of the word of God. I tell you, as I, as I speak this thing, you see, sometimes, because we are talking about the word of God and we are dividing it accurately to open up these things. The spirit of God, let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. The moment you begin to communicate the word of God very accurately, it's like his body is itching him. He wants to move. He wants to confirm it. I'm telling you how to confirm the word. It's not Holy Spirit. Move. Move. That's not it. Let the word of God be communicated accurately. And it's like it's like he cannot. I'm not talking of just shaking under the anointing. I'm talking of signs and wonders and miracles. You place the word of God upon everything. The word of God is on the air. The word of God is on your chair. Everything that can communicate the word of God. That's what makes the anointing. When the word of God saturates a place, the Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. The Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes. If the word goes to your kidney, he's following it there. If the word goes to your academics, he's following it there. If the word goes to your business, you don't get the Holy Spirit to move outside the word of God. It's witchcraft. So send the word of God and the Holy Spirit follows the word. Are we together? Yeah. You send the word of God and the spirit moves in that direction. So if I declare that I prophesy to your finances, if the Holy Spirit does not back that, then it was not the word of God. Even if I quote scripture, are we together? So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that the word of God has been released in a place. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that his word has been released. We pride ourselves with theological knowledge. We pride ourselves with knowledge of scriptures. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. But it's not the word of God. So the Holy Spirit cannot back it. Please hear what I'm teaching you. The Holy Spirit only comes to the scene. When the word of God is released. Whether through speaking. Or through any platform. Including your body. Being a manifestation. So when you want to see the energy of the spirit released. Then be sure that what you are speaking or doing is the word of God. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? Mm. If it's not the word of God, you are not going to get the Holy Spirit here. Please hear me. The degree to which we have seen the miraculous is the extent to which the word of God has come out. So you can speak 100 words. Only 20 of them are the word of God. The Holy Spirit backs only 20% of your communication. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is the difference between what we call anointed people. They may not have all the verses, but their bodies have become greater platforms to release the word of God. So the Holy Spirit in answer to the word confirms them. Are we together? I'm a carrier of the word of God. Not just by cramming scriptures. I have read it. But the word of God flows through me like water. The spirit and the life of God. I understand the principles. As I walk in the consciousness of that principle. And with the understanding. Every time I utter my word. Or respond in any direction. As the Holy Spirit would direct. That's what we call faith. I will tell you what faith is now. Faith is your response to and from the word of God not just scriptures your response to the word of God so you have to make it be sure that what you are responding to is not just scripture but the word of God and it is called faith and that faith will bring performance more on that next week I'm not talking so much about I need you to understand the word of God so that when we begin to teach on the dynamics the operation of faith you will know why certain things are not happening in our lives our idea of faith largely has been correct assimilation of scripture correct recitation of the same and then expectation in hope that something will happen it will never work that way are we together John 3 16 for this and that and that and that happened for we know the grace of our Lord that though he was poor yet he became rich so that we through his poverty might be, and we wrap it and we say Lord this is your word respond and say no it is true that I spoke that through the servants but you are only speaking scripture theologically listen let me tell you if the word of God was just scripture then the scribes should be have been the greatest carriers of the word they knew the entire Pentateuch of heart and Jesus looked at them and said ye are not knowing the scripture he said you search the scripture for a thing in them you will find life and you will not come to me listen if Jesus appears here and somebody is writing a book the Bible says scripture testified of him is that true scripture listen if you are writing a book about me and I show up who is a more authentic medium are you getting what I'm saying now so the scribes had head knowledge that prophesied about Jesus when Jesus came they said no Jesus we don't want you but we want the scrolls and he said you are hypocrites you read the scrolls they talk about me now you're reading I am here as the word become flesh you are rejecting me yet you are doing Bible study and Jesus said you are hypocrites are we together but a woman just ran and said thou I mean blind but if I may but touch the hem of who the word of God she perceived she didn't read anywhere but she saw men looking and she said i have heard and something has happened in my spirit i perceive and i understand that this man has power to heal there is nowhere in scripture where she read that you should take a step of faith she created an action based on her perception god honored that action and she was healed i'll teach you that next week don't take action until you perceive and understand the word you will be wasting your time so we take many steps do you know people can come and stand here with their tight frowning no perception no discernment no understanding all these men of God how am I sure a Jimmy's tie I'm looking at this tie I hope it's not my money that is going to buy another tie and you are there grumbling and arguing and you drop that and the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin now men of God will not tell you that because they need the money so they say no problem unbelief or not that's your business just drop it let's use it but I'm telling you the sincere truth 
it must be by faith so here's what the bible says hebrews 11 verse 6 hebrews 11 verse 6 give it to us please goodness hebrews 11 verse 6 hebrews 11 verse 6 i want us to read it now you will understand all that i've taught you there is a protocol to faith ready one to read <laughs> but without faith it is impossible to please him full stop whoever wants to be a man of faith what is the first step it says for he that comes to god must believe not his word leave the issue of manifestation you must believe that he exists it your perception must on you must understand the person you are dealing with the integrity of his person and his ability to provide for you number one then number two that he's a rewarder that he's a rewarder there are two things god wants to be known for to release faith one that he exists his existence means a lot because if he exists then he's mighty if he exists then he can hear my god's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion there's a song like that have you read have you listened to that song do you believe god is alive i know you will say yes your life does not show it are we together because if you believe it will compel you to take action look at me listen do you believe there is water on this table do you believe do you believe now you can come and carry it do you believe there is water on this table yes you will not come and carry it because you consider it to be a waste of time so do you believe there is god yes so you can relate to him this is why people do not pray they don't believe god is alive let me tell you the truth the revelation behind the life of prayer it's not religious struggles it's not an attempt to compete with people i pray for eight hours you pray for six hours all that is junk prayer is predicated upon an understanding that unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come after the service people are going to be waiting here queuing right to the back because you believe i'm not going what if i just i use style and just run out if I do that for three weeks, you will stop standing here because it's a sign that you doubt my ability. The first doubt of believers is not even in the power of God to produce that result. It's even his existence. I know you think this thing I'm telling you is powerful. The word of God is guiding us here. Do you believe God exists? It's a very big deal. I've given my life to him, no problem. Do you believe he exists? He's alive. He's alive. Sing it. He's alive forever. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. visit a herbalist you must live with a charm you don't visit whether that charm is a goat or is something you must live with we call them tokens tokens are representations of the existence of something are we together so you go to him i must marry that man put him in a bottle for me and then they carry his picture throw it in a bottle and lock it correct and give you they hide it somewhere for as long let me tell you the devil does not need that bottle he needs your faith and since your faith must be tied on something he gave you a bottle let me tell you why it still works even if you are born again you are born again because although you are born again you truly still you have tasted of the power of that charm something in you still tells you it's working so it continues working the day a higher revelation and a higher anointing contents it stops working a man of god one time was hungry and was passing and he saw a chicken 
that they are slaughtered for sacrifice he carried the chicken and roasted it and ate do you know why he never believed that that thing can do anything to him he said they shall take up poison who the believers believers in god not in miracles you believe in miracles but do you believe in god we're talking about knowing that god exists you know joshua selman exists but do you believe he exists let me tell you something you are a hypocrite if you claim to believe what is written here and don't believe the one who wrote it are we together oh i believe all things are mine do you believe the god who said it lord i don't believe in you but i believe in what you said does that make sense you don't believe in me but you believe in what i said no me and what i have said are one my word is my bond my word represents me when i'm not there you can take my word to represent me if i listen sam if you are dedicating an album and i stand before koinonia listen to me and i say joshua selman on behalf of myself i give you one million naira what is that that's my word now during if you go somewhere and you are doing your calculations you will calculate and say one million naira is coming from apostle have i given you the one million but you know me you believe in me it's up to you now to believe i can deliver it let me tell you what you do you will first size me and look at me can apostle really bring out one million naira are we together so when you ascertain that i'm able to do it number two am i willing when you ascertain that you say i believe it so when god says i will bless you your own belief sizes him and says no god you are great but these triplets you are talking about don't don't joke with us so the cure is not just action the action part is hard we're coming to that but if you act upon something you don't believe is a waste if you believe in something and don't act it's also a waste are you seeing how we are cleaning it up but we are starting tonight with the understanding of god his word his integrity say i believe in god shout it i believe in god i believe he is alive i believe he exists that's why i love the apostles creed the anglicans recite it all the time right i love it so much because it's an encapsulation it's called it's, it's like a statement of faith sometimes you need to recite what you really believe i believe my business can rise i believe my life can do this i believe my wife can get pregnant that's wonderful but do you believe in god there is no guarantee in scripture that if you believe those things they will happen he that believeth on me john 12 14 please give it to us we'll find somewhere and pray now john 12 14 john 12 14 the son of the living god himself speaking john 12 14 john 14 12 john 14 12 john 14 12 thank you read it please everyone one two read stop it is important who you believe not just that you believe who you believe jesus never said if you believe on things you believe that things that will happen they will happen he says verily verily i say unto you he that believe on what on me i want your faith to be directed to me not my works not my works i believe all things are possible but the reason why i believe all things are possible is because of him that can make them possible the end of your faith should be tied to a person and his integrity not the things he can do restful confidence he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also and what greater works than this shall he do because i go unto my father do you believe in him do you believe he exists sister listen to me you it's impossible to believe that fibroid will leave you until you believe in who the healer is are you getting what i'm saying 
man of God I believe my ministry will be great you are joking you are just playing games but I know whom I have believed and so I am persuaded in his ability that he is able the first thing is to believe the person then I am persuaded we leave the person and we believe in the ability and the things that will happen and we never get results he said is I see this happen all the time innocent people not taking out time do you know this is why intimacy is important with God intimacy does not help you believe things intimacy gives you an encounter an encounter furnishes the reality of God in you so that whatever he says is as good as him so you can believe Jesus son of God I believe in you I believe in you We call you our Messiah Jesus Son of God I believe in you I believe in you Sing one more time from your heart Yeah When I lock up myself, I carry my Bible. I set an atmosphere that brings an intense presence of God. And when I lie down and open my Bible, number one, I am not reading for preaching. MOG, I'm not reading for preaching. I'm not reading for recitation. John chapter 1, verse 5. In this and that and that. And, and we no, 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 no. I'm looking at it. Jesus said, If you believe in me, and I sit down there. Holy Ghost, help me believe this truth. Jesus said, his presence is there. Jesus said, and in my mind, I'm looking at people gathered for miracle service. They don't know me. Maybe they are discussing among themselves, where is the man? And the man is there walking on his faith. Lord, I know you are able. I don't know what I'm going to see here, but I believe in you. There is no assurance anywhere physically, but I believe in you. And when I step and come right here and sit down, the moment the worship team finishes, do you know what I tell the Holy Spirit every time? I say, let's go. It's time to go and do this. As I climb this stage, I'm an ordinary man, but not alone. He's standing by my side. And so I can speak and make every audacious statement. And because of what is coming, listen, let me tell you, I believe in Jesus. I really believe in him. When he tells me something, I don't doubt. You will always doubt God till you encounter him. It's not the issue of I'm trying. Now, let me tell you, watch this. The body of Christ has fabricated a formula that if not careful, it will be our carnal attempt to recite and to 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 um, replace encounters is the concept a false concept of recitation of scriptures listen what we call confession comes from the word homologio meaning speak that which has been said i believe that there is a step to that but let me tell you what many people do we think that we just get up and start speaking I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I won't hear anything. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And you said, I said it hundred times. Listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope you understand. I'm just trying to correct us because we will soon get frustrated with all those things. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to my mind. No, listen, your mind was designed to submit. Your mind is not that rebellious. It was designed to submit. You have not created the condition for it to submit. The Bible says, casting down every yetzah, every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Your mind can submit. The mistake that we make is that we don't take our time to meditate. Lord, this shall not happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. But it's happening. It can't happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. It can't happen. Me, God forbid, I must carry my child. I'm carrying my miracle baby. Now, that is good. I don't have a problem with that confession. But what is the revelation behind it? What is the revelation that sponsors that thing? What you are speaking is not the word of God. What you are speaking is emotion. 
what you are speaking is fear i can guarantee you most of what we do is a reaction to fear it's just a spiritual reaction to fear or a spiritualized reaction to fear because listen if you are speaking right now and they tell you your registration date is closing now for whatever maybe a job you need hundred thousand lord in the name of jesus i call forth helpers they are coming hey they are coming oh, oh god they are coming watch this watch this watch this let me show you that it's not just faith it's fear they were praying for the apostles to be released from prison in the book of acts they were praying and asking that god will send angels god now sent the angels peter came out and they opened the door saw peter shot him back and kept praying that's what many of us do are we together no i can't find my wallet i'm a tighter what is this i'm a tighter i dropped my tight in koinonia oh god i'm a, I'm a tighter at least it's better than nothing but i'm teaching you restful confidence say restful confidence If you are to be honest, you will know it's fear. I notice the loudest prayer in Koinonia is against the spirit of death and the calling of destiny helpers. I have noticed it personally. That every time I say everybody stand up and you know sometimes you can lead it seriously. Be serious. I mean when we say go is like an arrow. All kinds of. Where are your destiny helpers? Ah! where are they praise the Lord can you get to a point where when you speak you speak based on conviction when you say I shall not die you are not helping yourself believe an encounter has furnished a reality in your life and it's on the strength of that reality you say i shall not die how many of you prayed to sit down on your chair how many how many of you prayed to sit down okay you need okay praise the lord are you hearing what i'm saying how many of you when you came through perception and understanding you knew that there are laws that were created by god to keep this chair who among you is sitting down now and say, Oh Lord, I really believe you. Ah, no, this chair, you can't disgrace me now. Now, does that mean you are not a believer for keeping quiet? That's how restful your life should be. You can sit down inside fire and you only talk when necessary. Because there is something you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? please I, I want you to believe what i'm teaching you otherwise this series is a waste i'm taking out time to pound on this because i want you to believe god you step in and somebody looks at you and says i'm your grandmother go and ask about the people i have killed i vow that you will not see december this year it's a vow i vow that you will not see december this year you now go back lord is this how i'm going to go what did i do who did i offend let me tell you what most believers will say god forbid then later they will sleep and say kai hi now let me tell you that woman herself is even afraid of you she's but because she gave an attitude and said i dare you she left you with an attitude you too you claim to have the attitude but there was no restful confidence after a while you say apostle um, I don't know. I don't mind. I don't be. It's not me. But I'm just telling you so that you will pray for me. It's still fear. It's still fear. 
the same way an intelligent student writes an exam he knows what he wrote and they'll just look and say do you know only four people passed the student may just feel an inkling of fear but the student knows that even if it's one student that passed i am the one now he's not boasting out of nothing he knows what he read he understood it he cross-checked the question after the exam and he was absolutely satisfied it's called restful confidence the other person who does not really know what he did is now hoping that's why when he sees ah finally have you seen the best student lord i'm grateful i give you all the praise but i expected it this is how your life must be that you know god sister you are 34 you are not going to marry and all of a sudden you start going and say talk mountain to mountain valley to valley everywhere you start running all around and you just fidget there are many of us the moment somebody speaks to you someone holds your hand and says for sinner i had a vision in that vision i saw cats eating you up for sinner does not sleep for one week are you getting what i'm saying now i will tell you what the problem is the problem is not the vision the problem is not whether it's true or false the problem is you if i look at you now and say for sinner you're a man will you pray about it i'll tell you why it's not just because god told you you're a man there are too many things that have happened in your life to convince you beyond imagination you don't just believe you're a woman you don't just trust you're a woman you know you're a woman notice the progression i'm believing god i trust god i know my god i know him i know him god it doesn't look like him i know him when can you say you know him that's what moses knew he knew his ways though he slay me yet will i praise him because i know him i know him i'm trusting god to get to a point in my life where I don't just jack up my faith trying to believe God. 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 Oh Lord, I believe in you. Oh Lord, I... no, 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 no. At that point, you will move mountains. You will join these elders. Brothers and sisters, mountains will stand before you people will even pity you their eyes because they think you are dead at the end of it they will not see the mountain again and they'll see you shaking yourself that's how great people live in this life this ministry you have seen is here by faith by faith by faith by faith i've come to a point where i'm not trying to believe god i really trust him faith is based on the speaking of god trust is based on your experience with god you have had an experience with god there is a track record of his credibility so you can trust yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies we need to begin to walk by faith there are too many things in our lives that attempt to challenge our trust in God but you must get to a point where you say from today I walk by faith and the first encounter is to make the Word of God real in your life look at me the greatest investment you can make in your life is not having an education the greatest investment you can make in your life is not just having good friends the greatest investment you can make in your life is to make your life saturated with the word of god where you take the word of god as a project you have given yourself a basis for true faith because there are mountains to cross i like that don Wen song don't we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy is the lord. let's take that part again though we are few we're 
are surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. Listen, Koinonia, I speak to you. You are not the first to go through challenges. There are men on earth who have crossed this river. They have crossed the river of barrenness. They turn barrenness to triplets. Are we together? There are men who turn being a pauper, not affording 10 naira to giving billions to nations. There are men of God who turn two members to nations. You are not the first. There are those who overrode the mockery of men. It's time for you to leave the level you are in. This life of pity. Oh God, won't you show up for me? No, sir. He will show up when you are ready. Though we are few, you're surrounded by many who have crossed the river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, oh, oh. Listen, so God puts his word upon your life. Femi, you will be great. He will never do any other thing until you do something with the word. You can sit there forever and die a failure. It does not mean he lied. The word of God does not act on itself. By the time you look at your life, my father is not doing well. My mother is not doing well. I came from a village. Please listen. I am one of 17 children. I am even the second to the last born. I am 35 years old. I've not done anything meaningful. You look at all of this. And God says, if you believe me, God never gave men instructions until he revealed himself to them. The first assignment was to reveal himself to Abraham, revealed himself to Moses. Then he now sent them. They, every time they wanted to disobey, they remembered him. They remembered him the same way somebody want to tell you look there's one there's somebody that I saw in whatsapp I spoke with him and he said he's looking for a wife and the way you have been desperately looking for a husband or a wife I think I can do a range for you and he said no problem God works in many ways I believe but that is not faith it's unbelief are we together Listen, make up your mind today that you will never take any action in unbelief until you stay and believe God. This is why people who rush through things in life suffer. They rush to start business. They rush to marry. They rush to enter a relationship. They rush to do this. Do you know why? When challenges push you, you will not just look at what you are looking at. You have to look at God. You have to go back and say, Lord, I know you all. You spoke. You said koinonia will rise. You said you will give us a voice. I believe you. Many graduates are holding their certificates. Roaming around the streets in Nigeria. Angry. The same people can bring notes for you when they were in 200 level. They said God told me I will be great. Fast forward many years. They are now holding. They were never believing in God. They were believing in that certificate. They were just hoping that God was the certificate. Now that they've held the certificate, they are moving around and you are asking them, where were your visions? Where were your dreams? You said God gave you courage. God told you you will never fail. Brothers and sisters, what has God told you? Leave what he has told you and focus on him, the one who spoke. I'm reintroducing to you today a God who is dependable. I'm reintroducing to you today a God who had parted the sea. This Bible is a chronicle of his ability, a chronicle of his integrity so that you will believe him. Away with all those talk. We have mocked God. We have cursed God because of our challenges. I know there are challenges. I never said there would not be. That's why I read you Hebrews 11. But I want to see your reaction. Show me your reaction under fire. And I show you whether you know God or not. Show me your reaction when things are not happening. And I can tell you whether you know God. 
though he slay me will i be honest if i say i do not know him i know him i know him he is dependable if i die today without a miracle i still know him that's what made the people in hebrews 11 they knew him so much they rejected deliverance listen listen imagine for instance that god gives you two options in life just imagine and god says you will go through a season with me for six years and you will become so mighty or you will go through a season for one year you will start moving fast but you will not become as mighty as six years let me tell you what many of us will choose a bed in hand is what 20 in the bush oh god thank you for giving me this one year i can i can pay the price but there are those who know god and say lord even if it's 10 years let's go because one step in faith will give you 20 years worth of miracle one step in faith one step in faith have you not seen how god wiped the tears of people and changed the lives of people overnight men who trusted god koinonia i'm introducing to you a god you need to know before you start claiming to believe his word you must have an encounter with this god you must create the atmosphere for his word to be real in your life let it not just be talk 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 cheap talk talk no sir anything god cannot give me no man would claim to say he can give me anything god cannot give me that's why i can look at any man and say thank you for your open door but go with it god did not open that door and i will not go back to sleep and regret i believe god brothers and sisters look at me i have gone through mountains and valleys in my life make no mistakes about it don't you think i'm just talking to you from a standpoint of comfort i have gone through things that very few people can go through and survive i know that god is mighty by and large in life everything you trust will fail you and a time will come you will no longer hold on to things but a person pastors have called me man of god i've listened to your messages but nothing is working in my ministry and the first question i ask them is are you sure you are called and they say yes i said if you believe you are called did you hear what god told you they say yes i say stay there stay at the last instruction he gave you and die there there's a song that says i will be a good soldier he says i will die at my post if he does not shift a post let me die there i will survive the mockery i will survive the ridicule i don't have to be under pressure to explain things to people no it's not like this actually it's, it's, it's god that told me you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him you will never believe him until you encounter him koinonia please hear me faith the foundation of faith is an encounter with god an experience that furnishes the reality of him there are real mountains you will face you will face all kinds of mountains even the most trusted people in your life cannot take his place a time will come you will have to stand alone and say lord jesus i trust you i trust you though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever Holy surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing we'll be forever, singing forever. Holy is the Lord. 
say, oh, he is the Lord. Faithful is the Lord, say, faithful is the Lord. Faithful is the Lord. I want you to fall in love with your Bible tonight. Listen, please, listen, listen, please listen to me. I know you have books in your library. Listen to me, please. I know you have books in your library. I know you have DVDs. I know you have CDs. But I bring you to a point tonight where you eat this word till something leaves it and enters your spirit. I have in my phone a compendium of the words of Jesus only the words of Jesus spoken only everything Jesus ever said in the Bible only it I listen to it every time I love the words of Jesus I listen to it sometimes I let it run for hours as I sleep and I have encounters I wake up under certain intense dimensions I know something happened I don't need to know what happened I know something happened are we together i know that something happened to me an encounter i'm a very busy person just returned from a trip today tomorrow we're off for another one you know eddie was driving me we're coming from the bank and he asked me a question he said apostle do you ever rest i may live a busy life but not too busy for this this is the most accurate picture compendium of the dealings of God with men I don't read I read my Bible emotionally I don't read my Bible intellectually when I look at it I see myself if it be thou bid me come I I I replace Peter and I stand there I look at all the challenges that are before me there's a peace in my heart in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this peace that i know only comes alive every time i hear your voice there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light in my soul only comes alive every time i hear your voice listen brothers and sisters i want you to hear me if you do not come to a point of restful confidence through the word you will shake like a leaf at life at a point in time you will feel like dying that's what makes people commit suicide they get to a point in their lives where they move left there is no way out they move right they are pressed to the core and they think the only way is to drink to smoke or get a gun and blow themselves this word can minister the life of God to you this is ordinary scripture but the moment you begin to read it believing that out of it will come the word of God I assure you you will see miracles in your life and ministry sister I'm prophesying to you it's not over I don't know who said it's over but you take this Bible and recreate your future you have been predicting it by wishful thinking now create it through the power of the word you have been predicting it just by hoping hope is important it make it not a shame but let me tell you the truth if you must walk in any reality in your life you are going to have to create it i believe the word of god i know whom i have believed i have not followed cunningly devised fables i believe him it's time for every word that proceeds from your mouth to be a communication of faith don't speak until you believe we having the same spirit of faith it's called the operation of faith we having the same spirit operation of faith as it is written i have believed and so i spoke i did not speak to believe i spoke because i have believed 
you don't speak to believe you have an encounter to believe then you speak because you have believed this is bible faith time will fill me of jephthah and barak men who through faith koinonia please listen they built houses by faith some of us have come where god has brought us today it is by grace through faith by grace through faith by grace but through faith it is not just by grace through wishing by grace through crossing your legs and hoping that because it's by grace it will happen you will never see any result there are two prayer points we're going to pray now and we're done for this night next week i don't want you to miss it i'm going to be teaching you the dynamics of faith how faith really works we're going to look at this thing in depth how do i translate desires to manifestations rise up on your feet we will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high we will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high and I will rise in your name Adonai you reign on high let your first prayer point tonight be a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for showing me what I've been missing. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, thank you for showing me tonight that faith is not just wishful thinking. Faith is not just mental asset. Faith is not just memory of scripture. Although that is important. Faith is not just Bible study for a historical advantage. Lord, I thank you. Shabrata rato sobrekete. Ela kaparata kato shodo bregade balada 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 bal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, an addiction for scripture plant it in me. Listen, listen. There are some of us here as I'm speaking. For one month, for two months, you have not you have not opened this Bible. You have opened it in Koinonia. Listen, but to settle down. Some of us used to be really serious with studying the Bible. You just give God 15 minutes, just rush it. No, no, no. Listen. The goal is not to read the Bible every day. The goal is to be consistent. Life will not afford you. There are very few people, except those who use devotionals. There are very few people that can really afford to read the Bible every day. Five o'clock to six. It's a worthy habit. But not everybody will have that. Are we together? There are many leaders who don't study the Bible. I'm a leader. I know how hard it is to work with those routines. I'm a leader. I'm a man of God. Many men of God will lie to you. It's not every morning that I get up, I read my Bible. No, that would be a big lie. Many people will lie to you. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. 5.30, we're out of this town to catch up with the flight. There may not be time. I may barely even have the time to sleep. I may just get up and rush and take my bath. But one thing I can tell you, when the Bible says, when you see the Bible put an emphasis, the key is consistency. The key is not religion. You can develop a habit that will make you consistent, like a devotional, like creating a time, morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, or any of them. But brothers and sisters, if you want to grow in faith, you are going to have to embrace your Bible and give God time. So I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, grace to give you time in my life. Lift your voice. Grace to give you time. Grace to give you time. Grace to give you time. Not to rush around my life. 
that I will seek you with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you and worship. I will worship with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will leave my voice to you in worship. I will worship. Lord, I give you time. This is my busy life. Do something upon my life. Let me be a student of the Bible. Let me give time, knowing that my faith. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Not a Godfather, not a Godmother. All I need is you, Lord. The fountain of favor, the fountain of wisdom. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. talk about this but we are going to pray it all the same listen to me we are praying we are rounding up you cannot obey God until you know his will are you hearing me I will shift that to next week discerning the will of God but for now let me just tell you something there are two dimensions to the will of God there is his written will and there is his revealed will his written will is that which he has allowed to be written in scripture a communication of his desire it is it is not matured in the spirit to ask whether God wants you rich or God wants you alive there are scriptures that already show you it is his will 
Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts I think towards you said the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future so asking oh God do you want a good life for me it's not a wise prayer but there are certain dimensions of his will that must be revealed next week I'm going to teach you how to access the revealed will of God it is not written here that Femi should be based in Zaria it is not written that Sam should be in London are we together it is not written here that a Jimmy should marry hope it is not written here that Eddie should be a protocol in Koinonia but you will need let me tell you something one of the areas where people have marked time in their life they want to obey but the will the will the will I have studied this and I'm still studying it the ability to access the revealed will of God because if you act in disobedience it is still unbelief you have acted your action must be based on a knowledge of the will of God we're going to take off from there so I like you to pray one prayer with all your heart and say Lord everywhere I'm still in confusion as to your will for my life accurate clarity reveal to me lift your voice and pray koinonia pray every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area your will reveal your will reveal your will reveal your will make it clear make it clear make it clear so that I will run without confusion hallelujah listen listen every time you turn in the day of battle it is because you are in doubt of God's presence and God's will are we together there are mysteries there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make God God and the Bible says we should be strong in that the power our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom are we together now there are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers once and again Psalm 66 verse 3 Psalm 66 verse 3 let's read one to go say unto God how terrible art thou in thy ways help me please through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more, it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe no i will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no i'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men it takes power hallelujah it takes power it takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of god he says rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man nicodemus seeing the mighty works of jesus christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him 
The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's authorization upon a man to represent him. God's authorization. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability. Listen, the capacity to produce God's result, God's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace. We trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God. And since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry, I do not need the anointing. No, brothers and sisters, hear me. The anointing, the anointing, I've said it again, I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing. A thriving ministry and a struggling one, the anointing. A thriving career and a struggling one, the anointing. The anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now. Don't trivialize it. Don't say it is unnecessary. No. The anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer. It truly is an advantage. I think it was the last set of school of ministry students. I was teaching them when we were doing pneumatology. I was teaching them about the anointing. And I said, this is our wicked world. People ask you, who is your father? It's an iron bender. Who is your mother? She sells a car somewhere in the road. No, you cannot rise. We are victims of the wickedness, the sentiments, the ethno-religious biases of men. In a world where people want you to bring something, you need the advantage, not an advantage. Brothers and sisters, the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody. The anointing. Others may get there because of their connections. Others may get there because uncle so 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 went. And once you are there, they ask you, how did you come? And then you laugh. God's ability. God's ability. is working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. Working in me, it's working in me. That will be your testimony. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. Working in me. The anointing will always produce supernatural results. You've heard me say it. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in our eyes. If it is a man's doing, it is natural and logical. But brothers and sisters, when your result defies the natural progression, there is another agency other than you. When your results in any area of life, listen, they called Jesus. They said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub. He said, if I use Beelzebub, the prince of demons, by whom do your fathers? Their fathers were casting out devils. They fraternized with the realm of the spirit, accessed powers higher than a human power, and were producing results. That statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know. Yes. Yes. In this day and age, brothers and sisters, the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes. You don't just tell somebody be healed. That's arrogance without the anointing. Now, let me show you something. I've taught you this again and again, but I feel like doing it. Let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me, please. Look at this. Because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing. I want you to learn this, please. By the grace of God and by the privilege of His grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, Ejimi, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now? So when, if your desire is to buy a car, 
you need multiples of 1,000. It is good that you have 1,000. But it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result. This is how the anointing is. Don't say I'm anointed. It must be to the level that is capable. I thought this thing is energy. Physics defines power as work done per unit time. That's the definition of the anointing. God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results. That's the anointing. Listen. If I try to lift this, it doesn't mean I don't have energy. It means the energy dissipated per unit time is small. So I need another agency to assist me. Is that true believers? This is how it is. So it is not that the name of Jesus is there. It's not working. It is not that the anointing is not working. The situation that you are confronted with. This is why grace and peace is multiplied. Because there are situations that defy that current level. So he says grace and peace be multiplied to you why is it multiplied how god anointed jesus acts 10 30. look at the extent to which he anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing if Dan Gote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him because it is within his capacity are we together if Koinonia decides to give everybody here one one million we'll have a problem somewhere correct not because we don't have money it is the limit of our capacity so it's not when when this guy has a problem it's like a shop there is a dimension of anointing required to solve it so when you come to help him it's not just that you laid hands he may even fall down but the money is short what do you need more 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 of the same thing not more of a different thing more of what the same so Benny Hinn can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair. You see, that the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God. When you are not heavily anointed, you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result. But watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony. It's called capacity. The anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men. This is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces, we still remain in the secret place because there is no brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if i ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of god gets up here called joshua selman i would be a wicked man if i have not stayed with god sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God and we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry that's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith he switches to the covenant that that man has with him and it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men are we together tonight let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys yes yes it doesn't take time it only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it learn this about the anointing 
the anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this because the miracles and all this will not take time. Once your heart is aligned to receive, then you will receive miracles upon miracles. Are we together? This is how he gets glory. When he finds men who are heavily anointed, please hear me, never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great i tell you you ask the lord my work with god is as if i don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that i'm working with god and i seek to get i have seen them in dreams and visions and i did not see this current level we are trusting god for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory please rise up on your feet oh, oh, oh. Oh. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I'd like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty.
Shala prakato sete katabanda shabra gadabala. Shikete paratos kapratas kalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na na, na na na, shela na. Shega dabala kata prakato shikete. Shebres kete shala banda kata. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing You are holy You are holy You are holy You are holy Ta-da-da 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. Father, take me to a new dimension. There is always more. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new dimension. Take me to a new dimension. Are you praying? Take me to a new level. Let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence. Let there be an evidence. Let there be a testimony. Nina Ka Woyabo Sarki Salama Nina Ka Woyabo be the same I want to pray for you listen I want you to trust God please hear me especially for the visitors here I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny you have to believe that they will live now 
Are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now, at the count of three, I release that grace. I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough. I command that you leave right now. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. Go now. Bring them out. Shake it, take it, Inside and outside. hallelujah lift your hands my god i still see these breakthroughs i'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit listen i'm seeing at least 17 people 17 people i'm going to pray and the power of god will come upon you strange doors opening right now in the name of jesus i declare by the count of three one two three open now Open now, I command it. I declare it now. Now, open doors by the Spirit of God. Open doors, open doors. Sato Seketa, my God, doors opening over lives, opening over destinies, opening by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. and pray 
the Lord is showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus Lord where are they men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now I command that light and power that light and power Place. You are mighty in this place, mighty in this place. You are mighty in our lives, mighty in our lives, mighty. I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed now. Supernatural speed. Shepherd Ketata. Run like Elijah. I command it. I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now, and I'm seeing keys being given to people. Keys, listen, keys. It will come on you like fire. I see keys. These keys are solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. You will help me shout that name Jesus again. I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God. Now Lord, I pray that even as you have shown me, whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing, I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now. Are you ready? At the count of three. Get ready now, my God, my God, my God. One, two, three. Take this kids. Take this kids. So break your tail. for you but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do I've told you many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing
where I just mentioned a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now all those who come from that region south 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 a miracle now Ending captivities by the Spirit of the Living God. Holy, 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 there is somebody in overflow too you are holding a picture you are holding photos please come overflow too by the roadside let the person come let the person come quickly you are holding a picture the lord is showing me someone please let let that person whoever he is or she is please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come Don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mic i'm looking at you hold on is this her yes, i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in kano where is she she's at kano where is she that's what i'm saying she's at kano. and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she up there up to now she have made that get married uh -uh. And this, this, day, she's sick. this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from Mina, niger state niger state thank the lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes, sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children what you have? have you stopped giving birth do you think this is all i'm looking in a vision and i'm seeing one more a baby girl yes, after this yes, hold my hand sir but the lord is going to i'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but i want to pray for you because the lord is saying i should release you from this hold my hand sir i bring you life in the name of jesus christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of jesus christ mama please come i don't know this woman but I'm asked to pray for you. I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this. You're a woman of prayer. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Look at me, ma. You love God sincerely, but many things are going around. They are scattered in your life. And you have been asking, can God come? Can God step in? Even when you were there, you were praying that prayer. I heard you praying and the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you rest today. He's giving you supernatural rest. Madam, please stand up. Please stand up, ma'am. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? It's from Sabongari. You are coming. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus 
I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you as I lay my hands on you. I want to believe. There's someone you are outside. Your baby is sick. Run with the person and come now. You are outside. Your baby is sick. Run with the person and come now. That is, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? I'm going to pray for you. And the Lord is going to give you peace. And the Lord is going to raise people to help you. Now, sincerely speaking, I want to be honest with you. It is not within my power to stop you from getting married. I we generally can only advise because you see, let me teach you something, especially as a pastor. There are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world. And when you are ministering sensitive things like this, um, they are listening and every territory has laws. Are we together now? Things are a bit flexible in Nigeria, but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying, don't marry another wife, the son can go and sue me or the ministry. So this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith. Are we together, sir? It is not within my power and I have no right to judge you. I can only declare the counsel of God and pray for you. Um, this is very important. When you are speaking to people, although by the spirit, it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem. Mama, you are praying and you are still telling God there is one more thing you want to tell me. I'm hearing your prayers. Come, what is it? Give her the mic. Is that true? You are standing there and you are praying and you are saying you wish that I can call you again. There is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage and my daughter's marriage. Your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's, let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny help us. Mama, as I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, sir. If not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said I should tell you forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny helpers. Amen. Lord, send people. Amen. You see, we must pray that God will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers. It's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child, as if she never trained anybody. That's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late. Now, according to scripture, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But sadly, being as the situation is, we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones. A woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again. I pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat. That God himself will empower you and establish you and send you help. Mama, don't cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will help you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. See me after the service, madam. In Jesus' name. Thank you. I pray for you, sir. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord change your life, change your situation right now. In the name of Jesus. You are the one with the child? Please come. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. What's wrong with him? He's running temperature this evening. Just this evening? Yes, sir. But he has been having persistent cough. 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 Let's pray for him. Lord Jesus, I pray for this, your dear son, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now. And for you, his mother, I command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, why are they here? Mama, come. Please stand up. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's taking away reproach and pain Amen. from Amen. your life. Amen. This is what he's saying. Please stand up. Please stand up, man. That he's rolling away reproach. You see, as God speaks to one person, he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone. It doesn't mean that we have to call you. The time will not let that happen. Are we together now? For instance, madam, are you from Kaduna? 
who is from Kaduna? Uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person, a woman. There is a mama from Kaduna that I want to speak to now. This is a young lady now. I, I, a, a mama, like elderly woman. There's a woman who came here from Kaduna. Not a young lady, please. I, I want to just speak to that person very quickly. Mommy, look at me. You have gone through so much pain. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, it's your children that will wipe your tears. It's your children that will wipe your tears. May the Lord raise them and may they wipe your tears. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Why is she here? You are the Deeper Life um, lady. You are, you are a member of Deeper Life. Are you sure? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I pray that you do a miracle in her life right now. Put your hand on your stomach. God is taking something away from your stomach now. I curse it. Something is leaving you now as I hold your hands. You are even surprised. Even you, you would not have known that there's something there. I'm seeing like a malignant growth. Something that will later develop to a fibroid. I curse it by the God of heaven right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be over now in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. You are James. I will pray for all of you, but you love Jesus. You love Jesus. I have to pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is James. Do you love Jesus? I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. Very bad friends. And I'm still seeing it again. I don't know where that guy is. And the Lord is asking that we pray for him again. You see, all these gentlemen, you have to be careful. It's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station. Hold my hands. I pray for you. The Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural restoration. Sir, I pray for you. You will not, I don't know what is making. I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest. And the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure. In Jesus' name, I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for all of you. Come, sir. Let me just make contact with you very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hasana. Hasana. We're going to pray for the sick now. We have to be very fast. Hasana. Hasana. I'm seeing someone with the name Hasana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hasana. Whether you're inside, outside. Hasana from Kogi State. Hasana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hasana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you. In the name of Jesus. May you be a benefactor of the mercy of God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. Come. The mercy. Yes, it's all right if your names are Hasana. The mercy of the living God. Your name too? Your name is Hasana. Come, I'm interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. This lady you see she's smiling but there is a serious case there is a very mad wild spirit in the name of jesus christ there's a reason why i ask her to hold my hands this lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine now i command that spirit this is koinonia i curse you by the god of heaven be gone now let her go now in the name of jesus christ you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life this doesn't mean she's a devil it doesn't mean she's possessed no it's just the advantage that satan takes over the lives of people 
I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face. So you just see people smiling. But they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you my dear. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ I bring you life. Now. Life. Come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain. Repeated cycles of tragedies. I curse it by the God of heaven. An anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now. There are three ladies. I just heard the cry of children. And there are three ladies. You are standing in for your families now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families. Let the oppression in your family end now. This girl's family has gone through all kinds of things. This is Koinonia. I bring you the life and power that is in the name of Jesus. Now, this is what we're going to do. Please listen very carefully. Um, you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people. I wish that we had all the time, but we have to work with time. And um, we're going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. Whether you are inside or outside, if you are trusting God, listen please. Whether you are inside or outside, aside from these particular cases, if you are trusting God for fruitfulness for your loved one, or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random i want you to come in i want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here I want you to just walk out to me very quickly. We are going to minister to people in that order. There are so many people. It has pleased the Lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles. Please, it, it doesn't matter where you stand. If you are outside, don't come in. Just move to your projector outside. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to minister to you now. It will be very fast. Whilst we are doing that, please, your prayer request. If you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones, those online, you're yet to write. Do that quickly so that the ushers can follow. And then we'll do that very quickly. Every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations. There are so many people inside and outside. We are going to pray for the sick. The Lord has given us the grace. He's given us the capacity. There are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases hiv you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what i'm saying i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you are not embarrassed because i look at you if i don't pray for you i'm saying very soon this thing will eat you up i don't have to say more than that but you know what i'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um, have i told you where to go to okay so we'll go in that order 
I'm sure that I may just walk alone here. There are a number of people who are not here. We give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people. Please quickly, let's go. Father, we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles, let it be released regardless of who ministers. We minister in the name of Jesus. We bring that name that is above all names over every situation. Let your anointing speak. This is the moment, oh God, where you cure the incurable. This is the moment where you step into the lives of people. Let it be a quick walk. Let everyone here return with testimonies. In Jesus' name. I'm going to begin to minister to you, but there's one person here. The anointing of the Spirit will come upon you so strongly. That will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now. This is, uh, don't, don't mind me. I do all my crazy things. Um, let's just walk by the Spirit. Someone here in front. The anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Jebrondos Kalabakadusha Jebrosikala Jebrosikala Lebrondas Kabakadusha Skababala Lodekosha Legatosha Ebrakosha Bros Legate Borosus Alabradusha Kareos Please help them whether you are Osha or not Lebradusha New levels. There are people God is fishing out here. New dimensions. Jebros kaparu shabradi salatush. Jebros katabran dega dego shalabradi asha. Engreto susa brigatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one It's not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven 
representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me to take off my shoes we're going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and I'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the God of heaven who answers prayers Jesus Jesus the son of the living God Zebra Kato Salabranda Gadabash Mali Brando Zebra Gadash. Now arise, O Lord, come to your resting place. Brood upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the son of the living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speak these testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request Unto him that answers prayers, the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus, Most High, the Son of the Living God, every request here I say again is turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus, turned into a testimony. By the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because Believers are used to charismatism, falling down, rolling, and so on and so forth. We many times downplay the place of prophecy. 
prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of God makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember I told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer I'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know God and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of God this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now please lift your hands I want to pray for you oh come oh come me man and run some captivities why yeah Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and grant some captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us his israel in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command that door be opened now Open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Bible says, Have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day? But it says, As soon as Zion travails, he says, She shall give birth to son. I decree and declare, whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and i command that you must have a manifestation now i decree it i declare it by the power of the holy ghost manifested blessings manifested miracles hallelujah i decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything labor for everything I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life he said and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren I prophesy to you may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you I decree it I declare it. may an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says Elijah told Ahab saddle your ass and run for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water 
there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace i want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover i speak to you in the name of jesus as i pray for you the anointing of god will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them i release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now no delay i command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of jesus christ hallelujah isaiah 6 it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the lord shall arise verse 3 says gentiles you won't look for them again gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you i will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations i decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now. I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. hallelujah and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth and when he came he sat down with David and he says you will continue to dine with me here in the name of Jesus where your strength cannot take you Satos where your current level of achievement cannot take you i decree and declare may the hand of god that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and i will restore to you the years alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sitest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of jesus i create a space for you now in the name of the lord jesus i create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy 
everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of Jesus it dies now in the name of Jesus I speak to everyone God body carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results I change the result now I change the result now I change the results now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward I don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of Jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of Jesus hallelujah this is one of my favorite blessings to people the ministry of destiny help us I discovered brothers and sisters hear me that it always flows from God through men everything money can buy relationships can buy it there are needless battles needless battles that relationships can solve the distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of Jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are I command them to come into your life now hallelujah listen I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that God can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. I'm praying specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adulon enter the covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life may they appear appear in your life
Hallelujah. Every dying business here, every dying career, every dying ministry that is as though you are not called, I give life to that which is dying now. I give life to that which is dying now. Hallelujah. Father, it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service, June, you will return here 10 times better. Literally, 10 times better. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to release something. There are people here you love God. I gave you an example of this anointing. There needs to be an upgrade. You see, the thing with the anointing is, if it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it is not there. It's as simple as that. The anointing is a very obvious quality of God. It's not something you struggle to see. There are many of us, especially pastors, who are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace. It can manifest as anything. Wisdom, strategies, supernatural grace, the grace for performance. I want to pray for you activations are very necessary to drive people into great results i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions Zabo Sikata. there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of jesus i open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit i pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now i activate it now by the power of the holy spirit i release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of jesus christ but thou shall remember the lord thy god it is he that giveth thee power brothers and sisters there is such a thing called the power the anointing the unction the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth i don't know how many people it will please the lord to release this grace but i stretch my hands let it please the god of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah i don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of jesus christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly i say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly it says you shall call on aaron and his sons he said and you shall take your honor and give him honor is a mantle is transferable let me tell you this thing called honor is not about accomplishment there is a grace that makes people distinguished i pray for you from today that grace for honor 
I release it upon your life. May you be honored at the gates of your destiny. May you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward, tonight may their prayers be answered. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. I pray for your family. We believe in family in this place. No matter how lifted you are, if your family is not lifted, he said, as for me and my house, we believe in family. We pray for our children, whether in the womb or born. We pray. I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, supernatural lifting for every family. 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 And finally, I pray for you. In a way you have never seen, whoever looks at your face, I compel them to favor you. Listen, the Bible says, Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her. For as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face, you were compelled by an anointing. Believe me, I have seen this thing work in my life. I prophesy to you, men who have no business blessing you as they look at you, I compel it from their spirit. May they bless and favor you. May they bless and favor you. May they bless and favor you. Thank you for lifting. 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 We're rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here and he's saying I should tell you it will be like a dream when in three weeks it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks he will change your life. Whoever this is for I release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. You are going to start a business next month on the 5th and I'm seeing before 31st, it has made you a millionaire. In the name of Jesus. I'm not motivating you. I'm speaking as the Spirit is giving me unction. You don't believe it, you will never see it. Never, ever see it. Every difficulty you came here with, in the name of Jesus, you leave it down here and walk back free. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, in one minute, everyone still standing. I want to make two altar calls now, very quickly. The first, please keep standing, everybody. No moving around, inside, outside, please. There are people here, men and women, who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by His Spirit. Please, let's keep standing to honor them. And whilst you watch the power of God move, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith, the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus. I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call. The second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying, man of God, if you will lead me, I will run. I will run. Run to Jesus. Now, these two categories of people, I know there are people outside overflow. One, two, three, wherever you are, please, our time is gone. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. I'm going to count five. Wherever you are, leave your seat and run now. Please clear the way for them. One, quickly, quickly. Let's honor them as they come. Quickly, run to Jesus now. Please, quickly. Inside, outside, young and old. Quickly, quickly. I have decided to follow Jesus, no 
sisters I appreciate you for this great decision you have made the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life I want to pray for you listen I don't want you to just recite this as a poem I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before Jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church i want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight i willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ may they never be the same again I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare a new life for you I break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of God's life in you I release you to be victorious I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord thank you for this great decision now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um, lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the Lord bless you I love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this as fast as we can dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.